Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week five lecture. Uh, we're more than halfway through the course, and I want to talk to you about a number of things as far as this course is concerned in this particular lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on table of contents. And we're just going to move to week five. OK. And what we're going to be doing is talking about dramatization and story. And we're going to explain how movies compare to literature, art, and theater as a mode of storytelling and communication. So uh, we have a lot that we're going to do. And what we're also going to talk about really is basically the differences between film and theater when it comes to actually uh, adapting them both for their respective mediums. When you are dramatizing something or you're doing a dramatization, you're taking a bit of material, the source material, and you're going to control it in a way that it's going to be suitable for either stage or film. Now, a lot of plays and movies are adapted from books. And then, of course, there are people who will just adapt or create something specifically for either a play or specifically for a movie. One of the things that you've noticed, if you've ever seen a play and if you've ever seen a movie, is that there are limitations to both of those art forms in terms of how you treat source material. One of the things that the stage has a problem with is showing minute details. Uh, if they have an actor that they want to show uh, the expression on his or her face, she has to walk down stage, so where she's closest to the audience. Now the people in the first three rows are going to be able to see her emotions in her, fa in her face, but the people six, eight, 12 rows back, they're going to miss a lot of those expressions. That is one of the reasons a lot of the actors who are in the, uh, who work on stage frequently, you'll notice that they use a lot of exaggerated motions. Not so much so that it looks like they're doing a pantomime, but their, emo their physical uh, movements have to have at least enough uh, movement or boldness to it for lack of a better term, so that it can be shown to people in the theater in the back rows. So they're always playing to the people in the back seats. Whereas filmmakers do not have that problem. If they want to show uh, the expression on an actor or actress's face, they zoom in or they actually uh, push the camera forward, whatever. They can change the shot size so that they can sh change the emotion that you're getting at that particular time. So that is one of the, the that is one difference as far as immediacy and in the performances. Uh, in theater, you have that live quality. Uh, anything can happen, and that's one of the things that uh, makes uh, plays different from theater. Um, I give a little story in the lecture for this week about a play that I still remember watching as a little girl some 30 plus years ago. I went to what is now known as the Air, well, what was then known as the Airy Crown Theater in Chicago to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Of course, I had seen the animated version that Disney uh, made in 1937. Love that. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, dwarves uh, as a play. My mother was a big uh, theater goer, so we went. And everything went as predicted. You know, you had the colorful costumes. Everyone, uh, every one of the actors had uh, their roles uh, nailed down. There weren't any flubs of performance that I can remember. But a couple of things struck me during that performance. One, uh, 
when Snow White is about to eat the apple, and I hope I'm not doing any spoilers for anyone, Snow White is about to eat the apple that the witch has given her. And right before she is to bite into it, one of the kids screams from the back row, don't eat that apple, it's poisonous. Never would happen in a film. You could scream in at a film, and a lot of people do, but you're not going to change the performance anyway. Uh, so anyway, when you are looking at a play, like the Snow White where the kid screamed, the actor has two choices. She can go on and pretend that nothing happened, or she can engage the audience, which to this woman's credit, and I wish I knew her name, is exactly what she did. She turned around and walked downstage because after a moment, after the first kid yelled, don't eat that apple, at least uh, the whole audience erupted with, don't eat that apple, that witch poisoned it, right? So anyway, she, the actress walks downstage, turns, and puts her hand to her ear and says, what was that? And then the uh, woman who is playing the Wicked Witch, uh, she's like waving her hands, you know, saying, and putting her finger to her lips, saying, shush, shush, you know. And what happened is the all, whole audience really got into it. Some of the parents were laughing, some of the parents were trying to shush the kids, and the kids were could not be shushed. They kept telling her, don't eat that apple. So uh, finally they got the kids calmed down enough and it was the actress who was playing Snow White. I don't remember how she was able to gain control of the piece so that we could continue. Uh, but we finally allowed her to eat the poisoned apple and it, everything went on as it should. But one thing that got us all at the very end of the piece, Snow White uh, was talking to Prince Charming, uh, was waiting for Prince Charming, and Prince Charming came out on a real live white stallion. And we were beside ourselves. You have never seen standing ovations from kids before. But I'm telling you, it happened. And I always joke that that was one of the best plays I had ever seen. Uh, and I'm not really a person that likes improv. You know, I want people to stick to the script. But I am convinced that that director from that day to this said, take that Disney. <laughs> okay. What's funny is that a lot of the uh, Disney animated films are now being transferred to theater and they're actually doing a good job they're using the things that are available to them one the heightened costuming they have to do more with their costumes than they could uh, in uh, in film well not that they could but might be necessary for actual film uh, for instance the Lion King the Lion King it, uh, was a tremendous success on Broadway because they did what they could do best. They went big. Everything is larger, is more colorful, uh, and they didn't really try to, try to hide the actors. They knew that if they tried to hide the actors completely, they would lose some of the things that were great for theater. So they had to make sure that they stay true to the animated uh, pictures, but also improve on it. Now, going from a film to a play is really tough. We all know that. One, you don't you lose some of the intimacy uh, in a movie, but in a play you lose some of the claustrophobia. When a, in a film you can make a film very claustrophobic. Uh, you can do a lot more with the actors. You can take an actor that's actually not suited for a particular role 
in a film and make it work, whereas you're not maybe able to do that in a play. Um, in, the, in your book, they give a great example from Magnum Force with Clint Eastwood. The actress is a full, uh, full foot shorter than Clint Eastwood, but it doesn't take away from their romance because they're able to put her on a box. And so when they show them being intimate or whatever, um, kissing or holding each other or whatever, you don't t uh, pay attention to their heights. You don't make any changes in uh, your perception of what's happening. So that's one thing. Um, now, a number of people have taken movies, I'm sorry, taken plays and adapted them to the film. And usually what ends up happening is scenes are added, they give more uh, characters, they do a number of things in order to what is sometimes called open up the piece. Whereas you'll have some films like Carnage from 2011, Hurley Burley from, gosh, oh, I think that's like 2003. I could definitely be wrong. They are very intimate pieces, but the filmmakers, to their credit, did not expand the piece more than what was necessary. They didn't add extra scenes, add extra people. They kept the dialogue, but they used the blocking that they knew that they needed to use, and they used uh, the elements of mise-en-scene to their benefit. And those are just some of the things that you have to pay attention to with dramatization. I'm going to end this particular piece for this week. I want to thank you for listening, and I'm going to wish you a good evening. Bye-bye.